Hi, it's Teddy here today and we usually speak about knitting and crafts and inspirations on this channel but today it is a little bit of a different video since uh, we just came back from our trip to Ireland um, there's been so many questions on Instagram about the trip that I thought that I should make this video a separate episode and uh, just gather all the information for you in one place so let's dive in we've been to Ireland before and uh, we even lived there for, for a little while and that usually involved renting a car and this time we decided to have a completely different experience and uh, just do everything on foot so our plan was to walk um, half or just chunk of the carry way which is a long distance trail um, around the Pen Kerry Peninsula in the western coast of Ireland and um, that was the plan. We had to walk the thing and then have a few days to just relax somewhere in a nice uh, countryside. Officially the carry way is around 200 kilometers and it's split into 8 to 10 different stages depending on how long of a distance you'd like to walk in one day. This information is available online. There are many sites that you can see all the stages and uh, accommodation uh, suggestions and um, that was very easy to plan on our own without any additional help. Regarding accommodation in Ireland you can either do B&Bs, which is bed and breakfast and those are usually like nice um, sweet homestays with the Irish families. The prices are around 45-50 euros per person and uh, that usually includes breakfast. Uh, you can also uh, you can also stay in hostels in uh, many places there there are more budget budget friendly options um, like hostels I don't know if they provide breakfast probably not and they are around uh, 30 or 40 euros per person depending on on the hostel and then you have like bunk beds and um, and some nice mates roommates you can also camp in Ireland and um, there are many uh, organized campings that camper vans use and uh, there are also places for tents and they have nice amenities and kitchens and hot showers so that's also a very nice option which will cost you around 20 to 25 euros per tent and um, you can also do wild camping which uh, according to, to the official uh, information um, online is not illegal but you have to have a permission from the landowner and um, if you can get it and <laughs> which I, I believe can be tricky if you're somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there are no signs of whose land this is uh, that can be tricky uh, it also can be tricky in terms of weather uh, if you're in the middle of nowhere and it rains um, it can be a very miserable experience I imagine but yeah it's up to you so if you'd like to to do that you can try it's not um, illegal backpacks I have a little uh, 28 liters backpack which without water and uh, snacks but with the trekking poles at the airport was um, 5.5 uh, kilograms usually on the trips like this you have to think about uh, optimal weight of 10% of your body weight so if you are 60 kilos that would be around 6 kilograms um, the weight which you can carry without any discomfort boots it doesn't matter which brand you choose the shoe has to fit you really well I would recommend having higher boots not just the uh, walking shoes because it will rain and in some places it gets really wet and boggy so for Ireland I would advise to have a higher shoes than, than the uh, I don't know sandals or or just a lower wa uh, walking trekking shoe you need to think about your uh, feet expanding uh, and uh, you need to have some extra room and um, the most important thing I can tell you is your feet have to stay dry at all a time so if you have to change socks every few hours do that if you have to use baby powder to keep them dry do that if you have to take off your shoes and I don't know wash your feet in the in the river or in the stream lovely they will relax and shrink back and then will dry and you can walk after that uh, for, for hours do that um, everything that works for you to keep your feet dry and without any blisters 
uh, do everything to have that. I had really bad experience on the Camino. Um, in 2019, I did um, Camino Primitivo in Spain. And uh, because my shoes weren't proper, um, I lost both nails, uh, both toenails. And uh, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. I had to work on them for another year and a half, probably, to grow them back. And uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. So, shoes are important. About the second pair of shoes, we did carry with us a second pair of uh, running shoes. And um, based on my experience in Spain, it was uh, very useful there. But in Ireland, considering the wet weather and the high probability of rain, I didn't use them very often. The idea is to switch to shoes if the weather is nice and uh, the road is nice, that you can walk in your lighter shoes. But in the end, I think for Ireland, it didn't really work out and it was an extra weight that I had to carry. Uh, and I didn't really get to use them much. Um, it's really nice to come to a B&B and switch the shoes and uh, put on something light if you have to go to, for food or just have a stroll around the town. And uh, maybe having uh, just light flip-flops uh, is better option than... About socks. I made a huge revelation this trip and um, that is compressive socks. I tried with different options and all the tracking socks with all the padding and everything fancy stuff it doesn't work for me. What works is having two pairs of knee-length compressive socks that keep my feet in shape and don't allow them to expand. And as long as, they keep, as I keep them dry, I had not a single blister this time. And um, thinking back on my trip to Spain and uh, we met so many people in Ireland with blisters and sore feet, I was so happy I found this solution. So think about that if your feet tend to expand and um, you get blisters very easily. Uh, like I have super, super soft feet and they will blister really fast. So that's that could be a nice option for you. Rain gear. You are going to Ireland and no matter how lucky you are with the weather, it will rain at some point. So you need to be prepared for the rain. Rain jacket, probably rain pants. Um, or the pants that are drying really fast. Uh, definitely um, waterproof um, sack for your backpack. I didn't take off mine at any point, no, no matter how sunny it was. I just really preferred having my underwear dry. Prices. In terms of accommodation, that will depend where you're staying. Flights are also depending where you're coming from. But in general, flights in Europe to Ireland are not that expensive because they have low-cost airlines like Ryanair, Aer Lingus, uh, what else is there? EasyJet probably? Um, but yeah, there are cheaper ways to get there than uh, everywhere else at the moment. Transportation. Um, buses are not really expensive and uh, local buses will probably cost you from 5 to 10 euros per trip uh, one way, depending on the distance. Long distance uh, buses, uh, for instance, one from Dublin to Killarney, cost us around 20, 25 euros. I'm not sure now. And if you buy it in advance online, you will get it cheaper. Trains are also a good option. Uh, the one we took from Tralee to Dublin was really comfortable and it cost us about 30 euros, which you also have to book in advance. Um, the meals are from 12 to 17 euros, depending on the place and the size of the meal. Um, the pint of Guinness will cost you from 5 to 6 euros, depending on the place. How difficult was the trail? Well, depending on the weather, I would say, on all the stages you will see notes that uh, the difficulty of the stage will depend on the weather. So I assume in the bad weather, it might be more difficult than when the, shine, the sun is shining, mostly because um, if when you go through the mountains, you will walk on rocks and those rocks are in the bog. <laughs> and if it's wet, it can be slippery, it can be really uh, boggy and wet. 
The difficulty will also depend on how long you have to walk in a day and how active you are in your everyday life. For people like me who spend most of their days sitting and working either on the computer or um, with my hand, I don't do enough walking in my everyday life. So walking 30 kilometers for me is difficult and uh, my feet are not used to that. But if you are someone who's on your feet for the whole day, uh, it might be easy for you. That all depends on our background, on our health conditions and uh, on the weight that we are carrying. The less weight you have on your back, in your backpack, the easier it will be. So if you look at the map of Ireland, Kerry Peninsula is this one uh, right here in the southwest part of the country. And um, the trail starts from the city which is called Killarney. And uh, we flew into Dublin and then took a bus to Killarney. And um, that's where the trail starts. Killarney is a nice big town. Um, it has a beautiful, beautiful lake and a national park. So it. If you've never been there, it's also a nice place to stay overnight before you start uh, walking the trail. We've been here before, so we actually booked an accommodation a little bit more south uh, from the city and uh, we walked six kilometers there like to cut a bit the, 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 the distance that we have to work next day, to walk next day. And um, yeah, the B&B was um, a beautiful, um, like, farmhouse with uh, horses running around freely and uh, sheep running around the the, lo the, the lawns. It was, uh, it was beautiful beginning of the journey and uh, the breakfast was delicious. And then on the first day, on the second day, we walked from Macross to the Black Wally. It was a beautiful walk through the park um, with a beautiful forest and along the lakes. Uh, quite easy and it's a nice beginning so you get used to walking and um, and the weight of your backpack and there is a really nice stop here uh, called uh, Lord Brandon's Lodge um, they have some food and uh, they also organize boat tours uh, through this uh, small lakes down to the big lake it is a nice spot to rest before before you arrive to your uh, accommodation in the Black Wally uh, we stayed in a small B&B run by um, a husband and wife, uh, with, a, with a wife being Thai, and she cooked a really nice uh, Thai dinner for us. So there was also a nice um, addition to the trip. Then on day three, we walked from Black Wally to Glencar here. And in Glencar, there is only one accommodation um, possibility which is the climbers in the pub and um, it was kind of nice as well they cooked for us uh, Irish dinner with uh, I don't know what was it fish and chips and we had some burger so after a long day of walking it was kind of okay um, this uh, section of the trail is actually probably the most beautiful it goes through the mountain range and um, uh, the highest mountain in Ireland, Caradon Hill, maybe I'm saying it wrong, but yeah, you see beautiful, beautiful views and uh, if you're lucky with the weather, it's it's a very enjoyable walk. I wouldn't call it easy, um, it was really difficult in some places, it's rocky and boggy and uh, yeah, I imagine if you go in, uh, if you are not as lucky as us with the weather, it can be really really tough uh, so no kids uh, probably I wouldn't I wouldn't advise taking kids there but yeah uh, on day four we walked from Glen Carr to to here Glen Bay uh, which is already on the west coast and that's where there is more life more pubs and cafes and restaurants and everything so here you will have uh, B&Bs booked and um, more traffic and um, yeah that should you should also expect if you come in a high season and there are many people staying around the, this area you should book in advance probably we didn't so we had to do a bit of walking in the opposite direction we had to walk from Glen Bay about two kilometers um, north to a B&B &B that we could book 
and it was also nice um, just random uh, Irish BNB you get used to it with <laughs> with some time you shouldn't expect too much uh, but like normal general comfort it's it's there so and then there was um, next day um, there was rain and uh, we were actually looking forward to this day because the, the the stretch is quite big you had to walk from Glen Bay to Kahersivin, Kahersivin which is um, which is about 30 kilometers and uh, in a good weather it could be doable but it was raining and this way actually goes like along the coast so your your views are supposed to be really beautiful with the ocean and um, and dingle peninsula here but we couldn't see anything so it was a miserable walking in the rain and we made it halfway to um, a small it's not even a village or maybe it is a village of two houses there is a bus stop so we made it here and um, there is a restaurant luckily we could hide from the rain and have some lunch and um, we were trying to catch a bus here but it never came so we had to um, hitchhike and luckily the guy um, we caught uh, he gave us a lift to to the village and uh, then we stayed here in a in a beautiful beautiful B&B that uh, the owner was super nice and she had an industrial dryer so she really helped us with um, with drying all our stuff and uh, yeah we couldn't have been happier and from there we also took a short walk then to the nice seafood restaurant here on the on the, on the edge of the um, peninsula so this is already an island here uh, Valentia Island, island. Um, and this is right on the tip where, where the ferries uh, go to the Valentia Island here. So that was it. The next morning we woke up <coughs> with our shoes completely wet. Um, they didn't dry properly. And on the next day we were supposed to walk here. Um, the, official, um, the official trail goes somewhere around here in the mountains. And then it ends on this day in Waterville but it was also like 30 kilometers so we thought of cutting it half and stopping here in a small hostel um, just in the middle of nowhere and then doing another half uh, the next day but since the forecast was mostly rain uh, we thought of another miserable two miserable days and decided to cheat the weather a little bit and um, and take a bus from from here to up north so that was actually uh, it with the carryway. Uh, then we took a bus to Killerglin, Killerglin, I think it's Killerglin. Um, well, this one was closed then too, but the village was really nice, and uh, we stayed in a very welcoming uh, kind of yoga retreat place. And uh, from there, next day we took another bus to Trali which is a gateway to Dingle Peninsula and um, in Trali another walk starts which is a Dingle Way and Dingle Way goes around Dingle Peninsula here there are also some mountains and um, this is also mountainous part so the views are really nice you have ocean and um, of course it's not like in this part with the forests and uh, really high mountains but there are hills here as well and it it's typical Irish um, landscape, so it's beautiful anyway. So we booked a little B and B here, um, close to Trali, and uh, it was beautiful. It was a, a whole apartment. We had a fireplace, and from there we next day we walked to to camp, which was about 18 kilometers. It's a tiny village where we could uh, take a bus. Uh, to go back or we decided actually to take a bus further and we took this road along along this um, this coast to Dingle and Dingle is also a small village um, very known by tourists um, and they are coming there with full, with, in full buses um, it has a lot of restaurants uh, seafood is really nice there 
because they have a port and um, this is a very very big uh, big um, center of life here you have um, tourist attractions like I don't know little local walks and uh, those nice beaches and and souvenir shops and everything like everything we didn't get to do in all the other cities we we did in Dingle in uh, two or three hours and then we just took a bus from Dingle back to our BNB and um, that was basically it um, we made a trip to Trali again and then on the last day we took a train from Trali to Dublin and uh, that was it flew back from Dublin to Amsterdam I hope this information was useful for you and uh, please let me know in the comments below if you've been in the area or if you're planning to go there and um, maybe you have some useful tips as well. Thanks for watching! See you in the next episode!